Hey, we're going to get some repeating pattern on a garment in CLO. So we're still using this pattern. Um, I've added a back. Um, she's got some nice ruffles on her back. I also made sure that all of the pattern pieces are on layer zero right now, right? Remember in simulation properties, we might have changed the layer at some point and they, that would be indicated in bright green. Um, but uh, all of these are on layer zero. So they're all showing their true color here in the simulation window. Um, we are going to just turn the whole dress um, a pattern that I made in um, college that's just an easily accessible pattern to me. It's very old, um, but we are going to change all of the default fabric to have this color. If you wanted like different pattern pieces to have different colors, you could easily change all of these to have um, their own unique fabric, right? We would choose add fabric um, and it might ask us to name it, or we could choose a unique fabric from the fabric section. Uh, we accidentally added two. Um, and we could then assign, like maybe we want the collar to be a different pattern. Um, we could assign the collar to be fabric one. Um, so, uh, let's let's get around to changing the default fabric though to have its own unique texture. Um, first off, we can change. Um, we need to select the fabric in the object browser under the fabric tab. Select the fabric, and we are going to um, be under material. So we can close information if we want um, and just look at material and we're just changing the front side of the fabric to have this pattern. Um, under texture we are going to choose this little symbol which means um, I think find a file and um, I have the file name saved in my repeat except it's a little messed up. There we go. And there it is, except it's a half drop. So I don't know if that one's going to work, um, but I know that this one that's labeled straight repeat will work. Um, and remember if you, we can try this one though. Uh, I think it's going to show a seam technically. Yeah, there's a seam in it, but there it is. That's the idea anyway. I'm going to change it though. Um, what I'm talking about is like because this is a half drop and um, there's no settings, I think, that allow me to change it to be a half drop. Um, I know how to adjust it in Photoshop, um, so I could go do that, but instead I will choose to swap out the pattern to something that I've labeled straight repeat and I'm pretty strict with myself about how I label single repeats. I always say um, single repeat straight um, and here we go we'll just do we'll do this one it's got an interesting texture to it and good color and there we go um, and it's so interesting how the pattern plays on the um, pleats here. Everything, everything is looking really great. Um, I'm so pleased with how simple that was. All right, so the um, the collar. Uh, we have to look at fabric one in order to discuss the collar, and we can just change the color um, of the back side to be something if we like. Um, there's lots of options, of course, uh, but we can just uncheck this.
Okay. And let's just try changing the color. Oh, it says color none there. So I just double clicked and opened up this menu. We can hit OK. Here we go. So it did change the color, um, but it's still a little faded, I think, because it's the back side. So I think it does that to automatically show it's the back side. Um, but she's looking great uh So I want to take this opportunity to talk about a new tab and um, that is the print layout tab. Okay. Um, or the print layouts layout. Um, and these layouts set it up so that it's easy to adjust things. Um, so sorry, I will finally make myself small. Um, Hopefully you don't <laughs> mind having looked at me. All right. Uh, and in the print layout, you can see that this is like yardage of the fabric. And um, there's ways we can change the width of the fabric over here um, in the properties editor and see it's indicated up here. So it could match a fabric in real life that you had. Um, and that would be, that would be really fun. And we can adjust where we want the garments to sit, right? So if there's a particular part of the fabric or if there was, this were an engineered print, you would be able to put it on the, um, put the pattern on the garment um, right away, uh, which is very exciting. So, um, and I think it updates automatically. We've been looking at the wrong side though. Here, I'll try changing the front. So we'll just move the print over a little bit. Yeah, so then you'd be able to see exactly how that looked. Very cool. Um, and this is also how you could like optimize the fabric. Um, Right, and I think we can rotate too. So uh, if we hover over this little dot, we can rotate. Um, so if we wanted to, we could line all of these up. If we didn't mind um, what direction they were going in, we could try to optimize the amount of fabric that we used in here for each um, piece. Right, and we would eventually have we would use less yardage, right? And we would see the length go down over here. So this is um, essentially marker making in CLO. Um, markers are like the layout of the pattern, if you remember. 
Um, The layout of the pattern on the fabric, I suppose, um, and like how how that all fits in together um, in the most efficient possible way, hopefully. Yeah, if this is a woven, it really shouldn't matter which direction things go in, especially um, for this pleated section. So it's definitely okay to turn things 90 degrees on a woven. We already saved a yard. So uh, this could be really helpful for getting things placed exactly right on the garment. Um, so that's how you change where the pattern sits on the garments. You can switch back to simulation. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions um, or if my big head was covering anything while I was lecturing. Um, this is a very straightforward part. It actually might rely more on your knowledge of like Illustrator and Photoshop to get things ready to come into here because you just need the single tiling repeat, right? Um, like these guys where this isn't in repeat yet. We This is just the single tile that makes up the repeat. Um, if we back out and I show you some of the printables, you will see that these are it in repeat, right? Where we can see more, more of the repeat. Um, so we just need the printable, otherwise we'll have seams. And please review my um, review my articles on, or my videos, articles, like I'm a journalist, my videos on textile design. And, um, there's a playlist on my channel about textile design that you should reference that should be really helpful. Um, if you need to review any kind of aspect of um, textile design. So if you want some in-class lectures, you could listen to um, textile design, digital tools for textile design 2018 or 2019 playlists, but then um, the fresh digital tools for textile design playlist is all my 2020 lectures, which are like a little bit more polished and straightforward for YouTube. Everything's recorded online. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about like getting your textile designs ready to come in here. Um, you might want to review my lecture on, um, getting things ready for Printful, and I will try to link that. Um, so, all right, I will see you all later. Bye.